I'm in my 50s and I've noticed over the last few years that my voice has changed. Sometimes it's gurgly, sometimes it's raspy, and especially in the morning, I can barely speak. If it's changed this much over the last few years, what's it gonna sound like 10 years from now? Is there anything I can do to keep my voice from sounding so old? And here to help us answer Robin's question is Dr. Sunil Verma, otolaryngologist from UC Irvine Medical Center. Welcome, sir. Thank Welcome you. Welcome back. Nice to see you again. This is a, a great topic. We really don't, we've never touched on it. We don't really think of our voices aging, but our whole body ages. So it sort of stands to reason that our voice box goes through an aging process. You're absolutely right. The vocal cords are actually made majority of muscle. And so just like the other muscles in the body, like the face or the arms, they start to relax. And when they start to sag, if you will, it causes a few changes. One of those changes is actually difficulty in producing loud voice. Another one is actually pitch changes. But rather than take my word for it, we actually have some photos to show you. Okay, of the difference between? Of young vocal cords okay. and older vocal cords. So vocal cords vibrate about 200 times a second. And through a special camera, we've been able to take photos of vocal cords in slow motion. So you see here are young vocal cords. They're thin, translucent, and you see that during a normal vocal cord cycle, six out of those 10 photos, they're actually closed. And it's that closure that allows us to make sound. These are older vocal cords. Now take a look. They, in the entire time, they're not closed. So you see that they're a little bit wider. They're not and as translucent. And, and how does that translate to your voice? If you can't approximate your vocal cords, what happens? If you can't get good vocal cord closure, it's difficult to get good sound, it's difficult to make a loud noise, and you tire th th during the day. So That's the next the question, mm -hmm. what, can, what I do? can you do? Absolutely, well, to help fill those vocal cords, one of the things we can actually do is actually use filler, filling material, just like in cosmetics. And so this is an example, actually, of our filler that we can use. This can be injected there in the office. So here we see on the side of the screen, you see a vocal cord. And what I'm doing here is I have a needle through the mouth and we are injecting and filling up those vocal cords. And so what that's gonna allow for is to, for, you can see there that vocal cord is a lot bulkier. And what that allows is for a patient to get better sound and better projection. But we have also more durable options. We have implants that we can put in. So these are an example of two different sized implants that we have. So we can put these in the voice box and they actually are there permanently. And this, is, this really is to help with patients so that they don't fatigue through the day and to help their pitch and improve their sound. And I think we have some examples of, of some people, their voices, how they've changed after uh, one of these treatments. When the sunlight strikes raindrops in the air, they act like a prism and form a rainbow. The rainbow is a division of white light into many beautiful colors. So uh, well, that's the before. So it's, that's, yeah, that's a, you can hear there the voice mm -hmm. breaks in that patient's voice. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, then, yeah. and now let's see what, uh, how they sound after a treatment to improve that. When the sunlight rain strikes raindrops in the air, they act like a prim prism and form a rainbow. The rainbow is a division of white light into many beautiful colors. It's, yeah, it's, definitely. it's definitely improving. Mm -hmm. You can still hear a little bit of that raspiness and, and breathiness, but a definite improvement. Well, other, other things you just want to consider in terms of voice preservation. One is make sure that you're hydrated well enough. And so we, what we say is that people should actually drink enough water so that they actually pee clear, if you will. Another one is think about the amount of times that we use our voice too much, talking on a cell phone in the car or in a loud restaurant. And then lastly, staying away from toxins like cigarette smoke and allergens if you have allergies as well. So does this help answer some questions? It sure did. It, it really did. Well, thank you both so very much, Rob. Best of luck to you.